Okay, you are here with Mr. Price, and we are working on uh, Unit 8 for your EOC, and this dashing young man came up with most of the ideas behind Unit 8, um, Charles Darwin. And again, most of you think linearly when it comes to how we've evolved, and that is just absolutely not true. Um, there's multiple, multiple things that are missing in between each of these guys, and there's hundreds of thousands of specimens. So this thing becomes more of a tree branch than it becomes anything else. So some of the main concepts that we want to talk about here today, uh, struggle for existence, natural selection, artificial selection a little bit, and how um, species have descended with modification over time because of their fitness and adaptations. Uh, hopefully some of these cartoons I can explain and it'll keep you a little bit more involved. Uh, remember that evolution is a theory, and a theory is a very well-supported hypothesis. Um, some of the leading um, evolutionary biologists at Cal Berkeley and UCLA have said it's going to take the common person to um, take to heart evolution about 400 years. So we're about a third of the way through that um, time scale. Um, so know that this is a well-proven theory. Um, there are gaps for sure. Um, we're still working on our journey through this, uh, but evolution definitely is a theory, uh, just like the center of the solar system one time uh, was the Earth, and Galileo and Copernicus came along and said, no, that is an untrue, and the uh, sun is actually part of it, and it took 200 years for people, the common person, to believe that. Uh, starting with some of the main concepts from this. Um, this cartoon is talking about survival of the fittest and if you read this cartoon it's showing basically the concept that Darwin came up with is that some creatures are better suited to survive in certain environments and what happens is um, the creature that's in the ocean which kind of looks more like an alien uh, basically didn't survive and reproduce because um, it didn't have what it needed to be successful in that environment so we would see this um, creature on the screen um, in the fossil record and obviously the one that's still alive is the bear that's on top so um, just some of the ideas that you're seeing here in play are some of the ideas that Darwin came up with. The next one natural selection um, we we tend to think of them as two different terms but they're actually synonymous for each other natural selection is survival of the fittest and part of um, evolution is forgotten is that yes those who survive and reproduce are usually the strongest or best adapted to the environment. But there's also a part that m is missing in our, our book. And when people talk about it, is there's some selection going on, meaning we are choosing who we are mating with. We are choosing what features we are best seeing. And this cartoon plays on that. Um, you can see here in the picture, there's two deer and one of them has bigger antlers. So this uh, doe is chosen to go with this other deer because they're trying to perpetuate their species. And this also um, is at play with every single species on the planet. Why is a cardinal red? It's because the females have chosen that red cardinal time and time and time again to become um, their mate. And that mate and all the male cardinals now are red because of that selection that the females have been doing there. Um, fitness. Fitness is important. It's the ability of an organism to survive and reproduce in a specific environment. Um, the fitness level of dinosaurs because of the things that were happening, it didn't work out so well for them. So their fitness at the time, about 65 million years ago, wasn't very good and their fitness, or this, their fitness was low and this called them to become extinct. Mammals fitness was high, so they were able to survive and reproduce and for the last 65 million years, mammals have been the dominant um, order and class on this planet. Um, couple things that we just need to go through here. Adaptations, what they are are inherited characteristics that will increase a, um, organisms' chances of survival. If you remember back to the adaptations lab, I gave you guys forks, knives, spoons, and tongs, and tweezers, and typically for the last few years, tweezers and spoons have been, um, or have had the adaptations to survive and reproduce um, because they're better at pulling out the little um, beans and macaroni out of the grass. So they had better adaptations which increased their fitness, their ability to survive and reproduce. Darwin came up with this idea of descent with modification, meaning what you see here on the tree of life, is that every organism has descended with subtle changes and those subtle changes 
could be enough to adapt the species and change the species. And this comes into play with what's called struggle for existence. Because every species within themselves are struggling or trying to fight for food, they are trying to have subtle adaptations might increase their ability to survive and reproduce. So you're seeing this tree and what's left of life on this planet um, as a result of the struggle for existence and those adaptations that have been able to help creatures survive and reproduce better, which increases their fitness. So we are the remnants of ancient ancestors that didn't make it basically um, in our tree of life. Uh, the evidence for evolution is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, the first one here is a fossil, and that's this guy right here. This is a fossilized um, remains of an organism, and it looks like a vertebrae, and it's one of the first ones that we found during the um, Cambrian period. And actually, you find these fossils way up high in the Andes Mountains. There's actually a really good store of them. Uh, the next type of evidence is homologous body structures, and if you look here, all of these creatures have share a common ancestor, and if we were to go through and count their bones, and look at the proportions of their bones, we would notice that they have roughly the same number and in the same proportions. If we were to look at a whale, um, you notice that they have a humerus and ulna and a radius just like um, this monkey, humerus, radius and ulna, and then all of the phalanges and tarsals and all that stuff. Uh, vestigial organs, you have one, this tail, you have remnants of a tail that's become a vestigial um, structure. You have a vestigial organ called the appendix. It's sh slowly shrinking over time. Similarities in embryology, people get this confused because they think that it's, oh, they're supposed to look the same. That's not true. Um, similarities in embryology means that there are similar stages or similar checkpoints, meaning uh, eyes, brain, heartbeat, um, legs, fingers, uh, digestive tract, they all form in the same or at the same stages. One comes before the other because, and then the next stage keeps happening after that. It may take longer, it may take shorter amount of time, but the stages that things evolve are in the same time frame. So stage one, this happens. Stage two, this happens. Stage three, this brain forms. Stage four, uh, the digestive tract might form. All the stages happen in let's say alphabetical order if you will it's not that they look alike which if you got on the websites that's what they're leading you to believe and obviously this picture they do look different for sure but the stages that things come out are about the same and it's just the time difference that's what makes them different the last one is a geographic distribution of living species uh, this one is just to show that all of these are kind of look like ant eaters and if you look at their snouts and how they go about their business in their ecosystems, the geographic distribution of living species means that each creature adapts to a similar environment with similar characteristics. And that allows creatures to live in environments that are similar. And most of these are kind of um, desert or temperate grassland environments. They have similar characteristics because they live in similar ecosystems and similar environments. Um, I think that's most of it. Let me check here real quick. So one of the things that Darwin came up with on his own is he goes, okay, um, farmers and ranchers have been artificially selecting the best pigs, the best beef, the best cows, um, milk cows, the best horses. We've been selecting traits for um, 10,000 years. And the oldest one that we have, we've been selecting dogs to help us for 10,000 years. Um, Darwin said that if we have been choosing traits, then why can't nature be choosing traits? And he goes, nature is also doing exactly what we do, what we do uh, with animals and plants and other organisms. But nature is doing the selection. The struggle for existence, the competition is doing the selection. And he used artificial selection to show that natural selection is taking place. Two random facts at the end of this um, to get you all up. Darwin took a trip on the HMS Beagle, uh, sailed around the world. Most of his findings came on the Galapagos Islands because of the rare bird species and the finches that he found there. He compared those finches to the finches on South America. We know that the volcanic islands of the Galapagos just formed out of the um, ocean. So all the species that are on the Galapagos had to come from somewhere that somewhere was South America. And he started comparing um, fossils from South America to the Galapagos, found some common ones, and then said that they must have radiated or changed or adapted to each one of the Galapagos Islands. 
Um, so again, fitness, uh, adaptation, struggle for existence, natural and survival of the fittest, which are synonymous, um, fossil records, um, geographic distribution of living species, you have homologous body structures, vestigial organs, and I think I'm forgetting one. I hope that helps. If I'm forgetting one, please go back and make sure that you look through this video again. Thanks a lot.